walking is probably the best exercise um, uh, to get started with and actually one that you can take with you for your whole life. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the 10 most worthwhile exercises for maintaining an overall healthy and balanced lifestyle. Today we are talking about everybody's favorite exercise, the burpee. Number 10, pull-ups. The pull-up is a great example of how simple doesn't mean easy. Because as most of us know, pull-ups are hard. A few weeks ago he almost did a pull-up. But it just might also be the best all-around back exercise you can do. The lats, the traps, the shoulders, they all get a workout with the pull-up. Even your abs and core join the party a little with this one. Most people don't realize that pull-ups are not just a back exercise. To properly perform them, several other muscles in your upper and lower body must work together synergistically. And yes, when we first start doing pull-ups, many of us, like Pyle in Full Metal Jacket, can't even do one. One pull-up, Pyle! Come on! Pyle! But when you work your way up to doing five or even ten, the sense of accomplishment alone is going to feel oh so good. Number 9. Tai Chi don't let the slow and gentle nature of Tai Chi fool you. Developed in China as a self-defense martial art, this meditation in motion is very good for many aspects of your health, life, and longevity. It's a very good combination of the physical movement and inner peace and tranquility. Tai Chi is also about the mind-body connection. So as you progress through a routine, the slow and deliberate movements are just as important as your mindfulness, breathing, and attention to the moment and your body. The slow and low impact movements make Tai Chi great for older people, but the younger generation shouldn't dismiss it, as there are studies that have shown Tai Chi can improve your sleep, your mood, and reduce your stress levels which is something we could all use, regardless of age. Inhale, push up. Exhale, lower down. Number 8. Standing Overhead Press When it comes to your shoulders, the overhead press, also called the shoulder press, is one of the best exercises out there. Now, because the OHP involves multiple joints and uses a large range of motion, generally speaking, it should be loaded with moderate to heavy weight, somewhere in the 5 to 10 rep zone. But as with many of the exercises on this list, more than one muscle has worked with this move. While the shoulders are its focus, doing it standing also gives your core some love as it works to keep you balanced and stable. It's important to now transfer and ingrain that into your overhead pressing so that your brain understands how to use that increased range of motion under load. Now, this also means that if the weights get too heavy, it could throw off your posture and put strain on your lower back. In that case, you should probably sit down as a seated overhead press still gives the shoulders a great workout. Because it took the hips completely out of the movement and it took the layback completely out of the movement. It's just a strict, yucky, hard overhead press. To focus on the back, why not try a bent over row? Number seven, ab crunches. While the closest many of us get to a six pack is at our local beer store, if you want the kind that impresses everyone when you take off your shirt, you're gonna need to do crunches and a variety of them to work all parts of the abdominals. The good thing about crunches is that they really target the abdominal muscles and a little as five to eight minutes is enough. Listen to this, seven minute abs. Right, yes, I, okay, all right, I see where you're going. Also, unlike other muscle groups, you can train abs as often as five to six days per week but no matter how strong your abs are and how many crunches you do, you won't see that pack unless you also lean down the fat on top of them. If you can't see the results of your hard work, no matter how many ab exercises you're doing, then you're not doing it right. So what we have to do is make sure that our nutrition is in check and you're working on dropping your body fat levels so you can actually see the results. As they say, abs are made in the kitchen. Number six, swimming. Not only is swimming a good exercise, According to the Harvard Medical School Health website, it could just be the best workout. Now, most people who swim do so to improve their fitness, their conditioning, or perhaps their swim efficiency and speed. Doing laps not only works pretty much every major muscle group in your body, but being in the water means less strain on your joints as well. 
Add in the fact that it is also an awesome cardio workout, and you can see why it's held in high regard. We were um, talking about swimming, how I sometimes swim 50 laps a day. Well, it's great cardio. A 2021 study found that participants who did swimming for 16 weeks saw an impressive decrease in their BMI. There's even research out there suggesting that swimming can improve one's mood and mental state. Outdoor and open water swimming are thought to have further benefits, but with nearly 200 public pools in London, accessing them could be the answer to help many with mental health problems not feel so out of their depth. Number five, the burpee. Yes, the burpee. We all know it and most of us hate it. But it is really one of the most effective exercises you can do. So burpees are really hard. Nobody really likes to do them. And there's a lot that can go wrong in a burpee. Back in the 1930s, physiologist Royal H. Burpee studied over 300 exercises and the squat, push-up, and sun salutation were deemed by him to be the most essential. And as you probably now realize, the burpee combines all three of them. Some of the main muscles that are being used that you're going to work throughout this exercise are going to be your quads, your glutes, your hamstrings, your calves, chest, shoulders, triceps, as well as your abdominals. Each burpee developed the move to be a short fitness test, but it has grown way beyond that over the years thanks to its adoption by the military and its use in the CrossFit Games. Number four, push-ups. Drop down and give us 20. Can anyone here do this? <clears throat> okay, you don't have to do that. But if you did, it sure would be a great way to work your chest muscles, as well as your arms and shoulders, and secondarily, your core as well. One thing that's great about push-ups is that there's no equipment required. I have a straight line from my head to my heels, and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to lower down and come right back up. Coming down and extending up. All you need is a bit of floor space and you're ready to go with the super effective workout of your pectoral muscles. And you can even get more focused by varying the kind of push-up you do. For example, you can focus on your lower pecs with an incline push-up and show your upper chest some love with a decline version. Maintain all the mechanics of your regular push-up, but simply elevate your feet by putting them on a box, a chair, or a bench. Number three, lunges. We know how tempting it is to skip leg day, but the lower body is just as important to work out as the upper. I better not do any, I don't know, lunges. <laughs> okay, okay, enough, enough with the lunging. And when it comes to that lower body and those major muscle groups, you know the ones, the lats, quads, and hamstrings. Well, one of the best things you can do for them is a lunge. As one trainer put it, the lunge is awesome because it mimics life, it mimics walking just obviously an exaggerated version of walking. This has a nice way of hitting both the front and the back side of the body, as well as some of the core and subsystems that help with stability. Also, as anyone who's tried lunges knows, this exercise also works your core as you try to maintain proper balance with each exaggerated step. Throw in some backward and side lunges for an even more functional experience. Totally work your inner thighs and they will be on fire. So beginners, you probably want to just stay a little bit higher. As you get stronger, you can come low and lift all the way back up. Number two, squats. Yes, sorry to say, but this is another great one for leg day. First things first, squats. Okay, that's it. Uh, that looks really heavy. If you remember from our burpee conversation, the squat was one of the three exercises deemed essential by physiologist Royal H. Burpee, and we can see why. Many experts agree that the squat is one of the most effective and important exercises to have in your routine, and not just for the quads, hamstrings, and glutes. Squats are going to work your entire body um, and your core the same way a plank does, but it's more isometrically. So it's really a great full body, almost full body exercise. The squat, if done properly, is also an excellent core and stability move that will have positive ramifications beyond the gym. Hands out. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, walking. 
Yes, it's true. Walking really is that essential and good for you. First off, if you're walking, it means you aren't being inactive and sitting around. The HBM uh, shows how your muscles are working and moving, so your rehab's most effective. Um, it could help you with your gait, your posture. My gait? Mm -hmm. Because, as has been said, sitting is the new smoking. And while going for a run is also good, not everyone likes jogging. Whereas walking with a good pair of shoes is a less strenuous yet very effective cardio workout. Walking, even at a leisurely pace, requires more active engagement of your muscles. And if you want to add a little extra calorie burn to your stroll, try walking up hills. Walking has also been shown to have positive effects on one's blood pressure, weight loss goals, and cholesterol levels, among other things. There are lots of great ways to make this not just about getting out walking, but community building. Before you log off and start doing crunches, let us know which of these exercises are currently a part of your routine, or will be from now on. Wow, Wolfie. Two months ago, I didn't know what the word dumbbell meant. This place is great.